Last on Everdark. Balthazar realizes that he has to mind-wipe Ray the Acolyte because he's become problematic. But if Balthazar thought he was getting out of this evening with just that hard choice, he was wrong. Damon was challenged by some of his own people. Everdark, Episode 21, On Raven's Wings Julian felt fine tremors running through Damon's clasped hand in his. He gently rubbed his thumb against the back of that shaking hand while they followed Arceus through the house. As Arceus spoke on the phone to acolytes in the coach house about preparing for their arrival, Julian thought of how the vampire king had been so nonchalant about using his powers. But Julian knew now that it had strained Damon's already depleted energy reserves potentially to their breaking point. Julian covered their clasped hands with his free one and squeezed, willing his own strength into the immortal. The vampire king looked down at him with a mixed look of surprise and pleasure, but also with some consternation. I don't think anyone else can tell how exhausted you are, Julian sent. A faint frown appeared on Damon's plush lips. You should not be taking care of me. I should be taking care of you. I am the master. I am the king. I am the one you should lean on, not the other way around. Julian suppressed a sigh and shook his head. I'm not some damsel in distress, and neither are you. We should be leaning on each other, like partners. And tonight, you need a little help. You can't deny that. Though Damon did not respond to this at first, Julian sensed the Vampire King's dissatisfaction with it. He didn't think it stemmed from any idea of superiority exactly. It was Damon's view of himself, as the king and first among equals, the protector and the warrior, the one to be taking on the challenges everyone else fled from. After I feed and rest, I shall be myself again, Damon finally answered. And, until you are, I'll be right beside you. Just like I was when William tried ripping your throat out. Julian could still feel the iron grip he'd held William's wrist in. This time, Damon grinned. You are quite pleased with yourself about that. Hell yeah! I didn't even think about doing it. It just happened all on its own. I was a badass. Julian grinned back. You were much stronger and faster than he was. He will consider this fact later that one so young as you, who has not fed, was able to stop him. You didn't seem surprised that I did that, Julian pointed out. He'd wondered why that was. If his reflexes were lightning quick, then Damon's had to be double that, so the Vampire King could have blocked William even before he had. Damon shrugged. I was not. You are my fledgling. Of course you would be stronger and faster than any other here. So I knew you could take him, and that would allow you to start to garner respect. Julian snorted. Why does it seem like you're saying that you are the only reason I won? Because it is. My blood. Julian raised his eyebrows, but Damon's expression was serene. He had no compunctions about believing in his superiority thinking on how easily he handled William and all the vampires. Maybe he was right. Damon continued. But you survived my blood. No one else has. So there is something inherent in you that allows you to accept such strength. Might doesn't always equal right, you know. People shouldn't be picked to lead solely because they're strong. Julian argued. You are correct. I am far more than just stronger than all others, Damon answered magnanimously. Julian let out a soft guffaw. Okay, okay. I <laughs> see how it is. You're perfect. No, I am the king, Damon answered solemnly. I must be more, so I have made myself more. You will see. They passed out of the house now and were following a path through flowers towards a large coach house in the back of the property. The night air was redolent with the scent of flowers and freshly dewed grass. Julian took in a deep breath and almost felt dizzy from all the scents he was able to pick out. There were rose bushes to his left, an apple tree in the far corner, jasmine along the fence, and a running brook that they passed over on a small footbridge. 
He forced his eyes open as he realized they had nearly closed and focused once more on Damon. The trembling was still there. Don't get me wrong. The way you handled things with William and all the others was really noble, kingly. Julian struggled to find the words to describe how well Damon had behaved. I mean, you could have just crushed all of them. But not only did you defuse the issue with Heath and Selene, but you made what you said seem like a benediction. I know that Balthazar appreciated that. Damon did not say anything again for a long moment. I did it for you. Julian frowned. You mean you agreed with my reasoning, right? Yes. And no. I did it because you asked me to. And upon reflection, it was the right thing to do. Damon admitted. But I mostly did it because you wished for it. And you would have been upset if I had not. Julian was the one to be stunned into silence this time. That's a pretty big deal. You are my fledgling. You have more power over me than you know. That was said so softly that Julian almost didn't hear it. I'll keep that in mind so I don't abuse it. Julian assured him and squeezed the hand that was trembling more than before. That squeeze steadied Damon. Arceus stepped up to a white painted door with a bronze knocker and handle. He turned to smile at them. This is the coach house where our acolytes stay, Arceus explained. You will be staying in the blue room. An acolyte is already awaiting you there. I will need more than one. I am assuming that they do not wish me to drain their acolytes to death, Damon said. Yeah, that would be more than likely. Uh, Arceus, Damon is hungrier than that. Julian found himself translating again as the Vampire King seemed not inclined to speak out loud any time soon. Arceus was not in the least bit flustered. I shall have more readied. How many would be sufficient? A dozen, Damon answered. Uh, do you have twelve you can spare? Julian asked, sensing just from the size of the house that a dozen would stretch House Ravenscroft to the limit considering these acolytes had to feed the other members of the house too, and recover. Arceus froze for just a millisecond, but then answered smoothly, I can call in some acolytes that live off property to assist. I will hunt tomorrow, but tonight we must remain here in seclusion if possible, Damon answered, clearly not pleased at his weakness. Do whatever you can, Julian said to Arceus. The confessor nodded and opened the door into the coach house. Julian's first impression was that it was a comfortable and luxurious spa retreat. There were a lot of candles and low light, dark wood and neutral wall colors. It was soothing. Arceus led them to a second floor room to the right. Like its name, the room was done in shades of blue, from the palest blue walls to a midnight blue comforter on a bed that could have hosted an orgy. The bed was in a separate room to their left. There looked to be a full ensuite bathroom in there as well. The space before them probably would have been classified as a sitting room, as there were couches, chairs, a fireplace, and several small end tables. But it seemed far more like a high-end lounge space to Julian. The reason was that the couches and chairs were overly large and deep, allowing two people to lie down on them easily. A young man, dressed in tan silk pants only, rose from one of those chairs. He bowed low. Julian's palms were suddenly sweaty. Jacob, these are our very special guests that I told you about. Arceus said with careful enunciation of every word. King Damon is recovering his strength after a long sleep and will need to feed from more than just you tonight. So he will be your only visitor. You will need to rest afterwards. I understand, Master Arceus. Jacob spoke softly, still bowing. My dearest acolytes, I regret to inform you that this podcast has been edited to conform to this platform's rules and regulations. Obviously, sexy vampire interludes are not appreciated by these plebeians. This episode has been cut to be acceptable to audiences of all ages. Not to worry, if you are interested in hearing the full episode with all the steamy parts included. You can purchase a monthly membership at wraithrain.com. Not ready to commit to a monthly membership? 
then please visit the shop at wraithrain.com where the full episodes are available for sale in audiobook format. The Everdark Podcast by X Aratare is performed by Edward Fox, Adam Riley, Jay Thelis, Bruno Devant, Kelly Michaels, and Hannah Hart. Edited by Matthew Prince. Continuity by Adriel Wiggins. Everdark is produced by Wraith Rain Publishing in association with Her Grace Reads Studios. Copyright 2022 by Wraith Rain Publishing.